Hey folks, welcome back to another review with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today we're taking a look at Adventure Island. This is a game designed by Michael Palm and Lucas Zack, uh, put out by Pegasus Spiel. Uh, you're basically going to be uh, adventuring on an island. You have been shipwrecked here. You're needing to gather some food for survival, shelter, all of that kind of stuff. It's a very... Um, uh, Robinson Crusoe-esque type of feel because the elements are definitely against you, uh, nature is definitely against you, and you're trying to survive all of these different things. Well, uh, it's uh, let's get down to the table. I'll show you how it works, and then we'll come back with some final thoughts in just a few moments. So here I have a three-player game of Adventure Island set up for you, and basically this is a uh, exploring, adventuring kind of game where you're going to be taking actions on different cards which could have you add more cards into play. Uh, same thing over here, you're going to be taking place cards and there will be more places for you to go uh, and explore. Uh, the goal for Adventure 1 is to find uh, shelter and light a fire. And once you have done both of those things, you uh, basically shut down Adventure 1, set up Adventure 2, and you can continue playing, or you can just put everything away, and when you play the next time, you start with Adventure 2. So each person's going to have uh, their own character, and their character will have a special ability that they will be able to carry out. They also have attributes, which is basically the kind of... Uh, ability that it is, knowledge, skill, or strength. This is the icon that you're trying to do, which will be represented in some of the different kinds of dice tests that you'll have to be running. This is a number of dice that you'll be able to roll to test this skill uh, on one of the different actions down here. Uh, and that carries over. So you have an action that you can do here, and then your skills up here, and then of course you keep this token just to show that uh, what color you are on the board. So basically each round of each chapter is carried out in two phases. There's a day phase and a night phase. In a day phase you're going to be able to go to these different cards to carry out the different actions that are there. You have two actions that you can do. So you can do actions from two different cards. You can do an action from here and an action from there. Uh, so those are the things that you can do during the day phase. Once you have done two actions, you'll simply put your uh, person uh, lying down to denote that he is done uh, with his day actions. And once everybody is that way, you go to the night phase. In the night phase, you're going to have to eat food and uh, draw a hazard card after you have eaten food. If you can't eat food, if you don't have any, you do have to take a fatigue token and uh, that will be placed on your character card like such and uh, it makes things harder to do uh, throughout the course of the game because you're simply tired. Now, the order in which everybody takes their actions is really left up to the people themselves. So basically, if uh, green wanted to go first, they could. They would do their two actions. And then if uh, yellow wanted to go next, then they'd be able to do their two actions and, and so forth and so on. It's really dependent upon uh, how the players decide what order to go in. However, uh, the actions that you take have to be completed before the next person takes their turn. Now, as you pick up different items throughout the course of the game, like these things over here, there's fish, uh, uh, you know, furs, uh, meat, and then there's also wood and that type of stuff. Uh, when you pick those things up, you take them with you. But if somebody is at the same location that you are at or on the same card that you're at, they can use your resources. So there isn't really any... Uh, ownership, I guess you could say, of these uh, different uh, resources that are available to you. But if you don't have it and you're not at a location where somebody else doesn't have it and you need it, you can't use it. Uh, so there is a little bit of ownership there, but generally speaking, most of the stuff is going to be very communal uh, and anybody can use it as long as you're, on, you're at the same location or on the same card as somebody who has what you need. There are also experienced point tokens that you can take as long as, uh, well, whenever you fail at a dice test on one of your uh, skills here. And then sometimes uh, these cards will have 
uh, multiple steps that have to be gone through. So for example, building a shelter here says uh, you can do an action to roll a, a skill or a strength test. And for every uh, success that you get, for that, you'll put one of these things on here, and once you have six or more, you're going to take a fatigue token because you've built a shelter and you're tired, and then we'll put a different card into play at that point. So that's what these uh, progress markers are for over here. All right, so as we start out here, we're just going to go through one day and one night, and uh, that'll give you a basic idea of how the game plays. I don't want to show too much to you because there is a lot of spoilerish type stuff that's in this game, so I want to leave as much of that to the unknown as possible, but still kind of show you how the game flows. So starting out here, we'll have uh, Maria go first, and uh, she's going to go ahead and uh, try to gather up some food because we do need food to eat. If we don't eat, we take more fatigue tokens. Fatigue tokens makes passing tests harder later on. So we're going to go ahead and go to uh, the search for food card here, and it says roll three dice, and then for each yellow circle that is on the dice, you'll get to take uh, two uh, food tokens from this cart and then we'll add it to our camp because it's a communal type thing So we'll go ahead and take three dice and we'll roll them and so I had two yellows and an orange Which means I get to take two four and bring it here to the camp now We each will have to eat one food during the evening. So we do have enough food uh, to carry through so I can do something else. So I'm going to go over here to the flotsam uh, the beach card uh, and draw one flotsam card and uh, The flotsam deck is empty you discard this card. So uh, now I found some coconuts so I get two uh, Food and add and then discard this card So I get two food from the supply and that'll come over here. So now we have a lot of different things and then this card is discarded. Now that I've done my second action, I lay myself down to denote that I'm finished, and then it's somebody else's turn. And so Hubertus Wagner is going to go next, and um, we're gonna go over here and explore our surroundings, because we do, or we are gonna have to find some materials, I would imagine, in order to build a shelter, because it says put three wood uh, on this card. Well, there isn't any wood out here, so we've gotta go find some wood somewhere. So we're gonna go over here and draw one, place card and place it face up. If there are two places, you'll flip over this card. So the first place card is a jungle. And so now what this is going to allow me to do is, it says for an action for each strength test success, I get one wood. If you have uh, the ax, you get an extra wood whenever you do that. If your uh, roll contains two red strengths, uh, a snake bites you, and we bring one card 131 into play. All right, so that's that. We can actually find out where we can get that. So let's go ahead and do this here again so that we can have a couple of different place cards up and then flip that card over. And so then we also found the waterfall. And the waterfall says that we can discard one food and roll one die. If we get a green, we can get discard one uh, fatigue, yellow, two fatigue, orange or red rather, uh, three fatigue. And then finally you get to take a bath is what it is. So uh, that's pretty interesting. Uh, so now with that we have two of those things up, we will flip this card over. All right, so uh, it says now discover the island. We'll put him down, laying down, because he's already done both of his actions. Now this says discard one food and get one fatigue. If you roll a uh, skill yellow, you may draw one place card and place it face up. If you have a uh, telescope, you may draw and place the card instead of uh, instead on a green skill roll. So uh, that's pretty interesting. So now we have a couple more places that we can go to. Uh, but um, we're going to go ahead now, uh, and Jamie is going to go on and uh, try to get... She's got... Oh, wow, she's only got two strength. Um, that might not be a very good idea, but we're going to try anyway. We're going to come out here. Um, she might roll reds, though, but... Has to roll two. All right, she's going to come out here and try to find some wood. So uh, we're going to go out there, and uh, uh, she gets two dice. She has a strength roll of with two dice, and she's looking for greens. So here we go. 
And that's nothing. All right, well, if we would have had two reds, that would have been bad, but that's nothing for her first action. Her second action is going to be... Um, well, we did get one green, and we got one red, so that's not bad. Uh, we are going to get uh, some wood, however, and uh, we've got to take it back to this card. So we're well on our way to finding that out. Now that we have finished the day phase, everybody comes back to the camp like so. And now is the time where we're going to have to eat. So each person is going to eat one food. So three is three are discarded from our uh, campsite here. Now each person must, in order, uh, carry out a hazard card. So let's go ahead and say that Hubertus uh, Wagner, the red player, is going to draw this. Hunger pangs. So we have to discard two food. If you can't, discard as much as you can and get one fatigue token. All right, so we have to discard two food, which is bad. That's not good at all. Now that one's done. We come over and now let's say that uh, Maria is going to draw for hers. And let's draw this over. This is homesickness. So we're going to roll two knowledge. Okay, we'll have to roll knowledge and uh, we have to get two successes. If you fail, either discard uh, one food or get one um, fatigue. One thing I did forget that she um, failed on one of her rolls to get that, so she does get an experience point token for that. So, uh, Maria has to make a knowledge skill roll, so she's going to be rolling four dice, and she needs to get two yellows in order to pass this homesickness test. And she did. She got three successes, so nothing happens here. We're good to go. And then over here, Jamie is going to have to... Uh, um, uh, do one as well. Exhaustion. You may only perform one action there on the next day. So this one's going to have to go right next to our card so that we remember that in the next day phase, we're going to uh, only have only be able to carry out one action. And that's pretty much the end of one round, so to speak. We would continue going until, like I said, the goal of Adventure 1 is to find shelter and light a fire. So we continue doing these things, working through all of the different things that we have to do in order to accomplish those two goals. And that's generally speaking how you play Adventure Island. So that's about that for Adventure Island. Um, it really is a Robinson Crusoe-esque type of game. Kind of look at it as a Robinson Crusoe light. Um, maybe if, if that would be because it, it, it is kind of geared more towards a younger crowd, ages 10 and up. Uh, it only lasts around 45 minutes to an hour, possibly hour and a half. Um, and you're looking at two to five players. So it really does kind of hit the same niche just at a younger level, I guess you could say, which is really the reason why I call it a Robinson Crusoe-esque kind of game. It, it really doesn't have the, the heft that Robinson Crusoe has, but it still has the same feel, the same theme, of course. Uh, so there's all of that. So uh, let's go ahead and get into my pros and cons. So my first pro of the game is that uh, the iconography here that uh, is employed by the game is first of all intuitive and it's simple. There isn't a whole lot of iconography here and what they do use, it means the same thing over and over and over again. So it becomes very much second nature to you as you go through. Really by the second round, you're you're pretty much savvy on what all of the cards are telling you to do and there's no difficulty. Even when new cards come out, they're very easy to understand. Um, and if you don't understand them, it's very quick to figure out what they do mean. So that's kind of my pro here. Often these kinds of games rely heavily upon iconography so that they don't have to use a whole lot of text. Um, and so the fact that this one doesn't use a lot of iconography, uh, but also doesn't really employ a whole lot of text either, except for on the, you know, the flavor cards that are kind of telling you how the story's progressing. Uh, I really do like that about this game because iconography can be a bear to get around um, because you're trying to associate what that means to what it, it's talking about it and you have to take the picture and match it with the language and sometimes when there's a whole lot of that it gets really cumbersome 
but not with this game. Very good. I enjoy the iconography usage here a lot. My second pro of the game is that the artwork and graphic design looks very good. Now, the thing that I like about it the most is that it takes a rather horrific situation and puts a very light-hearted wrapping around it so that, yes, you are about to die, but you're having fun. <laughs> That's the best way I can under I can explain it to you. Uh, even this lady, uh, she does not look like she is stressed out at all. She's like, hey, look, let's go over there. What's over there? This looks fun. But yeah, you get over there, you try to chop a couple trees down, and you get bit by a snake. So you get the idea. It, it, it's a fairly horrific idea, um, or, or at least a very stressful theme, but the artwork and graphic design do very well in lightening that load a lot and uh, that makes the game more enjoyable and not seem more like work than anything else. The third pro for me is the uh, usage of the dice uh, and I like the fact that they're not based around numbers. You just have to get a certain color using the same skill. And I like the fact that you could have, you know, the arm, the strong arm with uh, the color in the background. You have to use, that's the color you're trying to roll on the dice, and that's the skill that you're trying to use. So I like that. It kind of harkens back to my first pro, the, uh, the way that that's just kind of intuitive. I like that. And I also like this system where you're not trying to meet a certain number or anything like that. You're simply trying to roll certain color dice and the only numbers that really are involved are the how many dice you're going to be rolling based upon what skill you're using and how your character is in that skill, whether it be good or bad. So with all that being said, I think that uh, we'll move on to the cons. And, and really my first con that uh, I'll mention here is that this really kind of just seemed like uh, you're doing the same thing over and over and over again. Now, with that having been said, there is flavor text on the cards. There's uh, different points where you're going to step back and, and read uh, what a card has on it to kind of bring you into that story mode. But I wanted more of that and less of the just, okay, I'm going to go here and roll these dice. Okay, I got it. Or I didn't get it. Or what have you. So it, it felt fairly monotonous there. Uh, but what I, what I was wanting is to have, I don't mind all of that. The You have to roll the dice, you have to use your skills and do all that. I don't mind that. I just wanted more story built into it. Um, I wanted more of my imagination to be grabbed and pulled in the direction of the game. And it just really didn't happen. It just became a very... La 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 la. Okay, I have to go do this. Well, definitely it's scripted. I have to go do this now and, and do that. And now I have to go over here. There, there weren't a whole lot of decision makings and the beginning of the game. And so I imagine that there possibly could be a lot more branching out the deeper you get into the chapters. But um, for my part, I really felt like it was kind of just a little bit too guided. Um, but again, we're talking about a younger audience here that they're shooting for, so maybe that's necessary. And my second con for the game, uh, I, I, the component quality wasn't wasn't good. I'll, I'll put it that way. I'll, I'm not going to say it was necessarily bad, but it, it definitely wasn't good. And, and what I mean by that is that, for example, I, I mentioned how I liked the skill system and rolling the colors of the side, but the dice themselves were just, uh, they felt and, I don't know, the tactile experience that I had with them, and they looked uh, cheap. Uh, maybe they weren't. I don't know. I don't know what all that production costs are and all that kind of stuff, but they just didn't look um, quality. And the cards, I don't know if you noticed during the thing, but they're all starting to kind of uh, um, warp. Um, and uh, we haven't had this game for too long, so it could be Florida humidity that's doing it, but at the same time, that's one of the things that really kind of has to be um, addressed in the production making, you know, the production process. So uh, I, I feel like I do need to mention it here. There's, there's a good number of cards in here, and um, the ones that we were using definitely got bowed up really kind of quickly, a lot faster than I would have expected them to. So the component quality is probably a little bit on the lower side here. Not horrible, don't get me wrong, but, um, you know, all the cardboard tokens were, were you know, durable and, and all that kind of thing. But the cards uh, that you're going to be using a lot, um, not 
probably the best quality, at least from my perspective. So really that's about that for uh, Adventure Island. Uh, I'm gonna give this one a six out of 10 because I did enjoy it. I, I, I didn't dislike it at all, but at the same time, I just think I wanted more out of it but maybe I'm wanting to draw more water out of the well that is here um, because it, I think it is garnered or it, it, it's, it's being targeted at a lower aged uh, community, uh, kind of as a stepping stone. Uh, look at this and check this out. And if you like this, you can move on to something else later on. Maybe that's what they're shooting for. I, I was somewhat disappointed by it, but I still enjoyed the situation and the uh, idea of going through the game. But uh, it's just gonna fall at a six out of 10 for me. I liked it, but I wanted more. That's it from me for Adventure Island. Thanks for joining me, I certainly appreciate it. We'll see you guys and gals on the flip side. Take care. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.